Uh, okay, good morning. Nandidinig ba ako? Tinig ako? Yes po, sir. Okay. So, so ganito, no? Um, let's start na kahit uh, wala pa yung ganyong classmates. Uh, baka late lang sila. Okay. But anyway, uh, this is recorded naman. So, they can, ano, they can actually go back. Okay. So, for today, I'll dedicate this, ano, this uh, day nila for, ano, for making the, ano, for establishing and making the announcements uh, of uh, how your quizzes and exams will be conducted. Okay, so since um, sa klase natin, major requirement nyo ang quizzes and exams uh, that form, forms part of around 80% uh, ng final grade nyo. Okay, so it is really, ano, it is really important for us to really pay attention on ano on uh, your quizzes and your exam as ano as uh, the major source of your grade okay so therefore uh, i really need you to listen in to the ano to the guidelines on how the quizzes and exams are to be conducted and at the same time um ano yung inexpect kong ano ano yung hihingin ko sa inyong ano manner ng pagsagot sa mga quiz questions at saka sa mga exam questions. Okay? So, uh, truth be told, uh, medyo mataas ang standard natin pagdating sa ano, pagdating sa pag-generate ng ano, ng uh, ng or pag ano, pag tingin sa mga um, sa mga sagot sa mga quiz questions at saka sa mga exam questions. Although baka in your class, baka hindi naman so hindi naman siya uh, katulad nung uh, ginagawa ko with my ano, my ECE classes. Okay, pero still uh, we would ano, we would um, apply okay, some of those standards on your class. Okay. So ayun, I would like to ano, I would like you to pay attention to uh, these guidelines on the conduct of your quizzes and exams. Okay. Para ano, para makapag-prepare din kayo for tomorrow's quiz. Okay. Para alam niyo rin kung paano niyo i ano, i ipo-compose nang mabuti yung mga ano niyo, mga sagot niyo para sa mga quiz questions. Okay? So, yun. So, I'll play, medyo mahaba to, no? Mga, ayun, mga 1 hour 54, so sakto pala isang buong klase na natin to. Okay, so, medyo, uh, will, ano, this will cover the entire class. Okay, so, which means na, probably, ano, um, although medyo malabo na to siguro, pero tingnan ko, baka makahabol ako ng, ano, mga recorded discussions pa dun sa rest of topic 2. Um, topic 2, uh, lessons. Okay. Para may magamit kayo tomorrow. Just in case na ano. Uh, just in case na kailangan ninyo. Okay. So, sige. I'll play uh, I'll play this na. And please do play at pay attention na. And um be ano, be aware of the guidelines. Okay? Kasi nga importante ito. Okay? So, sige. I'll start uh, playing this na. This video presents the guidelines on taking your quizzes and exams. And um, this guide, the, the, the guide, uh, these guidelines, uh, the written guidelines for the quizzes and exams are also provided in your um, class notebook uh, under the course for, uh, under the content library section group, uh, course section, uh, uh, course information section, and quizzes and exam page. Okay, so. Um, this is your guide in taking your quizzes and exams in this class. As your, as your quiz and exam reports are a major source of your grades for the course, it is, in, it is very important that you comply with all the guidelines set forth in this guide. Make sure that you read and understand that you read and understand each rule and make plans on how you can ensure 100% compliance to each. As a general rule, your non-compliance with the rules set forth here may cause you to 1. Incur deductions in your quizzes course, uh, obtain low scores for your submission, or worst case scenario, invalidate your submission either in part or 
in Hood. Okay. So these are the guidelines. One, um, schedule of quizzes and exams. The schedule of your quizzes and exams are already posted in your class calendar. So you can basically see your class calendar here, um, in which uh, it would indicate uh, the date and time of your scheduled quiz. Uh, monitor changes in the class calendar and our announcement of changes in the schedule of these activities so keep track of them. Quizzes are open for six hours okay, with a one hour grace period. Um, reports submitted within the one hour grace period are subject to point deductions depending on how late the submission was made. Uh, the maximum deductible points due to late submission will be 10% of the total number of points for the quiz. So for example, um, for a 100 point quiz, a maximum of 10 points may be deducted to late submissions. That's the maximum. But uh, the points to be deducted, deducted depends on how late the submission was made. Um, final exams do not have grace period and must, have, uh, must be submitted at the date and time it is due to be submitted. Uh, after the, uh, for, quizzes, uh, for quizzes after the grace period and for the exams after the um, submission due date and time lapses, uh, Submissions may not be uh, may not be uh, made, and um, it will not be allowed, especially if it is done outside the assignment module of Teams. So that 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 will concede, uh, that will uh, that will. Um, so if the student fails to submit uh, his quiz or exam reports uh, on the time and date specified, um, it is considered to be non-submission. Um, distribution of quizzes and exams. Your quizzes and exams will be distributed by the classes, classes teams to the assignment staff. So on the date and time of the schedule of your quiz or exams, the assignments module of teams will post and notify you that the quiz or exam is already open. So say for example, this is our teams. This is the, uh, the teams for our class. Uh, once the um, schedule for the start of the quiz or exam commences, you would see a notification from uh, the assignments module. So you would see here the, uh, the quiz uh, number, okay, when it is due to be submitted, okay? Now, open the quiz by clicking the view assignment button. Uh, check out the time of submission and uh, check out the time of submission due and the instructions. So when you open your, uh, no, when, you, when you open the, um, when you view the assignment, um, you would see something like this one. Okay, so here it specifies uh, when it is uh, the time it is due, okay, and um, when it will close. So remember that there, for quizzes there is a one hour grace period. So it will be due on, for example, 10 p.m. Okay, so it means that if the submission is made on or before 10 p.m., uh, that is considered to be regular submission and will not entail any deduction because of Late submission. But if the submission is made uh, after 10 p.m., but before 11 p.m., okay, um, the, the submission with, uh, will be slapped with um, deductions as stated before. Okay, then after 11 p.m., any submissions will not be entertained anymore. So here, uh, the instructions uh, are also provided. Okay. And these are the same instructions that are provided in the quiz form. Okay. So basically, when you see this, um, you can now you can click this um, button under the student work so that it would um, it would uh, lead you to the uh, quiz form. So more or less, the quiz form looks something like this. So uh, on the banner, you would see the course uh, code and the uh, quiz number, okay, and the, uh, um, and two links, two important things. The, the first one leads you to the questionnaire, and the second one uh, leads you to the answer sheets. So the questionnaire. So click on the first link to view the questionnaire. Note that you will not be able to download the questionnaire for data privacy results. Take note that this is a clickable link, so you can simply click on this one. Okay. 
So clicking the link to the questionnaire would lead you to this to this to this file or to this PDF file, which um again is not downloadable because of um privacy reasons. These are squeeze questions, so uh, the questions here are supposed to be um for your eyes only. Now let us zoom in so that we can read the contents. Okay, so um on the first um page of the questionnaire, you would read the general instruction for the quiz. So let us read it. The question code indicated in this questionnaire specifies the file name of the answer sheet template to be used to write your answers. More on that later. Download the answer sheet from the link to be provided on the quiz form. Again, more on this uh, later on. Make sure that as you download, the answer sheet is still named as the question code. For example, QZ101, and it's not modified. Also check carefully if you are using the correct answer sheet template for each question. Now work on each question below. Each question part is credited for 10 points maximum. The following rubric will be used to evaluate your responses for each question part. So the, the rubric to assess or to score your responses are provided here. So later on, we will uh, talk about this uh, in, in, in more detail. Now continue reading the instructions. Read and understand each question. Make sure that you're providing an accurate response to each question. Some questions may require tables, graphs, illustrations, etc. Make sure that each is provided when required. But you may also provide those, okay, even if the question does not require them, okay, but you feel that it will strengthen your argument and your response. So if the question really does not require uh, illustrations, graphs, tables, etc., but you, if you feel that it, it will make uh, your response better and um, more justified, then um, please do so. Just make sure that you are using them and interpreting, interpreting this um, materials correctly. Okay. Make sure to read and understand the guidelines in writing your reports. Check out your class notebook under the course information section for the page titled on writing your reports for the guidelines. We will talk about this again uh, later. Uh, Non-compliance of these guidelines may cause your responses to be scored low or overall be invalidated. Upload the accomplished answer sheets on their proper location based on their question code. Answer sheets uploaded on incorrect location will not be credited. So those are the instructions provided here in the questionnaire. Okay, so make sure that you understand these instructions. Now, if you scroll further, you will be able to see now the questions. Okay, so the questions would actually start on the second page. So here we display now the uh, the first question. Okay, as you can see here, uh, there is this question code which is QZ one hundred one. Okay, uh, the, this uh, the um, questionnaire also indicates the highest possible uh, score to be given for this particular question, and uh, the question parts. So basically, um, this question one has four parts: um, part A, part B, part C, and part D. So there are four questions under um, question one. Okay. Now, um, the question code is very is important uh, because it actually identifies the question and it identifies the, uh, uh, the answer sheet to be used uh, when writing your responses. So the question code indicates the following. Number one, the corresponding file name of the answer sheet where your responses are to be written for the particular question. So in this case, um, this question code QZ101 requires the answer sheet QZ101 uh, uh, as, uh, as, uh, as, as the template for uh, writing your responses to each of these questions. Uh, aside from that, uh, the question code also uh, indicates the corresponding item in the quiz form where your answer sheet must be uploaded in order to submit your report. So as you can see here in the quiz form, um, question items are indicated by the question code. So here it means that you, ha you are to upload uh, your uh, report for QZ101 on this location using this button. Okay, so and uh, you have you are to, to, to upload the um, the uh, answer sheet, the accomplished answer sheet, okay, for uh, the question code QZ one zero two for 
uh, in this location by clicking this button. Okay, so those are the things that, uh, that you need the question code for. So that is why it's really important that you uh, mine uh, the question code for each question. The highest possible score indicates the maximum credit points for the question. Each question contains parts. Um, in the sample case above, question one has four parts, part A, part B, part C, and part D. Okay. Um, each part is scored using the rubric shown in the questionnaire for a maximum of 10 points, which is the number indicated at the far right side of the question, uh, of the question part. So on the question part, on the questionnaire, you would see here uh, part A, okay, and then the question for part A, and then a number here. This number actually indicates the maximum credit points for this question. So your response for this question may be scored for a maximum of 10 points. So each of these is, is scored for 10 points. Now, um, the rubric is applied per part independently. So you, you, you use the rubric for part A for the, for, to evaluate the response for part A. You use the rubric to evaluate your response for part B, and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, let's proceed to the answer sheet template. Uh, the second link provided at the banner of the quiz form is the link to the answer sheet templates. So when you, uh, again, going to the um, quiz form, you would see here a second link. Okay. Uh, download the answer sheet templates here. So if you click this one, it will lead you to the following OneDrive location. So as you can see here, um, there are two answer sheets available for quiz one. Uh, but this is just for sample quiz, okay? For sample quiz one. So you're, you're, what you do is you download them, okay? I, I suggest you download them individually so that uh, you, would, you wouldn't have any problem uh, with, uh, with the file name or with anything, okay? So let's um, save this into our workstation. Let me download uh, the second answer sheet. Again, I suggest that you do this one uh, one file at a time so that um, you wouldn't have any problems, especially with the, the file name. And uh, remember that as you download, you need to preserve the file name of uh, the answer sheet template. So now we have downloaded here the answer sheets uh, with the code QZ101 and QZ102. So again, as a reminder, uh, you need to preserve the file names uh, as QZ101 and QZ102. If you have uh, inadvertently changed the file name, please revert it back to these file names. Okay. Now let us open one of the answer sheets uh, the for, for the first uh, piece, uh, for the first uh, question. So here we have downloaded the answer sheets for each of the questions. Okay. So let's open them. So inside the answer sheet template, you would see that um, there are now spaces provided for each of the question parts. So since your question has four parts here, question QZ101 has four parts here, the answer sheet would also contain four parts. Okay, so there are now spaces provided. But um, before you um, proceed with, um, with writing your response, you first have to fill up this um, header with the information required. So you double click the header, double click this part to open them, and then you put in your information. Say for example, this is um, De La Cruz. Uh, Juan Palermo. Uh, the course code, for example, is um, ECXXXX30. Okay, and the section is, say, for example, um, ECE one and one. Okay, so you have to accomplish that those uh, information first. Okay, now after that, you can now proceed in writing your response. Okay, so um, first thing, uh, when you write your response, okay, okay, when you write your response. Um, it is very important that you review the guidelines on how your report must be written. Okay. Now, these guidelines are written on the page on writing your reports posted on the course information section of your class notebook. Now, let us um, let us uh, take some time 
in order to review those guidelines on guide on writing your reports. Okay, what are the what should be the guidelines that must be followed when writing your reports? Okay. So first, um, number one, answer incomplete sentences and provide context to it. So for starters, answering questions in incomplete sentences or in sentence fragments is not fun to read. Okay. So if uh if this is the question, okay, if this is the question and you answer something like this one, this is not a very good response, okay? Because this is how a child in grade school would answer that question, okay? It, uh, the child would only give one or two questions because um, that's the limitation of his or her vocabulary. But you are not um, grade school students. You are engineering students already. You have way more vocabulary and more wisdom than grade school students, okay? So therefore, you should be able to answer questions in complete sentences. So this is an example of a better answer. Okay. So aside from giving answers in complete sentences, elaborate on your answer so that you can demonstrate the thought process that went behind the generation of the answer. Okay. So for example, uh, this is a question. Okay. So again, as we discussed, an answer just with one or two words is a very bad answer. Okay, but here, um, it actually provides, okay, the thought process which um, justifies uh, the answer elevator. For example, um, the answer states that the, an elevator is an example of a feedback control system. Now, the answer goes on by saying that the control systems consist of subsystems that interact to produce an output. It commanded using an input signal. Okay, so... Um, what will the what the student do? What will the student do here is that he will justify the um, the elevator as a feedback control system by using the definition of a control system and pointing out that this definition, okay, or, the, or the definitions or, or the the elevator complies with uh, the requirements of the definition. Okay, so first. He states that an elevator is a mechanical system driven by a motor and its driver belts, pulleys, and counterweights to move a loaded elevator car to ascend or descend. So that is where it um, uh, the student justifies that an elevator consists of subsystems okay, uh, that interact. Okay? Now, a user uses button to send a signal to the system, okay, which... Um, consistent with this part of the definition, okay? And what happens if we command a control system using an input signal? It moves the car to a certain floor and the elevator car responds to that input by moving into the floor where the user has commanded it to. So it produces an output when commanded, okay? So therefore, um, the student provided a, a, no, a um, the thought process by which uh, the, uh, the thought process used in order to um, justify his answer of elevator as a as an example of a control system. Okay, so another example here is that what is the polar form of a complex number? Okay, so a bad answer would be something like this one. It just writes the, a number in the complex form. So a better one is to actually expound on the idea. Okay. So a complex number in the rectangular form x equals x plus i y can be expressed in a smaller form, okay, with r equals there, there and theta equals there, okay, and so on and so forth, okay. So these are not perfect answers, but these are better answers than the first, all right. These answers provide factual information at the basic table. It means uh, it answer, when your answers are like that, it means that uh, you are uh, no, you are aware of um, the basic facts that surround the topic. Or the, the question. Okay. So the answers had contains or had some de number of details that the student was able to uh, use terms and to precisely connect the, these terms to each other. Okay. So one thing that uh, you are to, uh, to be assessed to is your use, your, your use of terms related to the subject matter that is being uh, 
uh, talk about or is being asked. Okay. So the thing is that um, we will only we will only be able to understand. Uh, we will uh, one manifestation of us understanding topics is uh, we can accurately use terms. Okay. Um, we can actually uh, use terms uh, in order to explain uh, things in and around or in order to discuss uh, matters in and, in and around the subject matter. Okay. So third, in the first question, especially, the answer reflected the student's thinking. In order to be able to consider an application via a control system, the application should contain elements of the definition of a control system. Okay. So these are important pieces of evidences uh, that can point to your achievement of the outcomes being assessed in these questions. Okay, so to summarize, answer questions with enough detail so that the answer becomes reflective of your achievement of the student outcomes. Number two, uh, use figures, tables, graph equations into your answers. So the best answers to the questions are those that provide elements that support the argument being raised, whether these elements are being required by the questions or not. Okay. These elements include illustrative figures, tables, graphs, codes, equations, etc. Okay, if the question requires you to show a table of values, then you should provide one. Okay, otherwise your response is incomplete. If if the question requires table uh, a table of values, then uh, you should provide a table of values. Okay, uh, so uh, you will not have a shot shot at obtaining the full credit for that question. Okay, um. But you have to remember also that these elements, these illustrative figures, tables, graphs, codes, equations, etc., do not explain do not explain themselves. These are not self-explanatory. Okay, uh, you have to do some explaining when you provide these um, uh, elements. Okay, you have to do some explaining. Okay, so a common mistake uh, among students is that they present a code in MATLAB or Octave in order to answer a certain question, but they stop at just presenting the code and the results. Okay. They kind of leave the interpretation of the results to the one evaluating their paper, which is wrong. Okay. Uh, codes are not self-explanatory. You have to explain them. Okay. So, for example, you have this uh, problem. Okay. Uh, this is an actual student answer from a previous quiz. Okay. Or pre previous um, activity or assignment. Okay. So, here the student shows uh, that it con uh, it converts the it, it uh, rewrites the equation. Okay, and then it um it uh or he um provides the what we call the route table for the for the for the system. Okay, the route table actually deter uh is is a tool used to determine whether a system is stable or not. Okay, so from here you can see uh, uh you can uh, you can um determine the stability of the system. Now here is the uh, uh, part of the of the of the student response where he provides codes, okay, and an output, okay. So and then that's uh, that ends the response of the uh, student. Now here are the good points about the student answer, okay. The student verified the conclusion, okay, uh, which is uh, the conclusion that the system is unstable, okay. He first arrived using a method taught in the class, which is called the route table, okay. Uh, that conclusion was verified using MATLAB. Okay. Um, remember uh, that this verification is not part of the question. So the question does not require the verification of the conclusion. Okay. But uh, the student proceeded okay, in providing the verification anyway. So that's very good. Okay. So another good part of the uh, code uh, or the of the response is that um his codes are different from other texts in his answer or in his response. Um, basically, uh, when you write codes, um, you have to provide them using different texts so that it, uh, you will be able to differentiate codes from the other bodies of your response or from the other texts of your response. So those are the two good points about the student's answer. Now, what, uh, what are the bad points about the student answers? Okay. Uh, the basis for the for the student's conclusion, okay. So, as you can see that uh, the student here um, uh, states that, as you can see in the table, there are two sign changes, which is, and therefore the system is unstable. So, um, this uh, this uh, statement actually lacks uh, 
the details needed to actually um, verify where the student was able to obtain the basis for the conclusion. Okay, it does not specify where to look for these two sign changes. Where are these two, two sign changes? Okay, uh, in the route table. So the student did not point that, that, that out. Okay, so that's, uh, no, that's a uh, point against the student. Okay, so the justification for the conclusion is not really that uh, pointed out. Okay, so also, um, aside from that, um, the student also failed to um, to provide the basis, okay, for uh, the conclusion. Okay, uh, here's the thing: if there are two sign changes in the table, why do we arrive at the conclusion that the system is, system is unstable? So, what makes us think that two sign changes in the table makes us think that the system is unstable? Okay, uh, will three sign changes in the table make the system unsta uh, stable? Okay, so is the stability of the system depend on the number of sign changes? So what was the basis of the conclusion? Okay, what was the real basis of the conclusion? So therefore, th 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 that is uh, where the student failed to really justify uh, his conclusion based on uh, the tool, which is the route table. Okay, now the codes are, were unexplained. So what do the codes do? Okay, how do they help you verify your conclusions? Okay, so again, codes are not self-explanatory. In, in, in general, the elements uh, that you will be able to add in your response are not self-explanatory. Okay, they need to be explained. Okay, they need counterpart discussions in order for them to be complete. Okay, so there. Also, a graph was presented, okay, which was not required. By the, by the question, okay? So that should have been a good point for the student or a point for the student, okay? But the thing is that uh, he presented a graph, but he, 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 he did not explain what the graph means. So therefore, what does the graph mean? Uh, how, how does it justify the, or how does it, yeah, how does it justify the conclusion that the system is unstable, okay? So again, these elements, the graph, the codes, okay, and other elements that may be added the table, okay, are not um, self-explanatory. They need to be explained, okay. So if used properly, illustrative figures, tables, graphs, equations, etc., uh, can be he very helpful in improving your answers to questions. But if they are just placed there without any supporting narratives or discussions, they will just be a sore in the eye, okay. So it would just uh, cause you to, instead of scoring a high, uh, or obtaining a high score for the question because you place a graph, but if you stop short of um, providing discussion for the graph, um, it might actually work against you, okay? And might cause you to obtain low scores instead, okay? So a special reminder when presenting codes into your report, okay? So as a general rule, commands and codes that you wish to include as part of your report must be presented as text, not images. So when you present codes, for example, if you are to uh, if you are to uh, no, to provide um, or if you are to use a computational application, okay, or computational software in order to uh, as part of your solution to solve a problem, okay, and then you needed to provide um, the commands or the codes in order for you to um, solve the problem. Um, you provide those codes as texts, okay, not as images, okay. Uh, students tend to screenshot codes, which is wrong, okay. Do not screenshot codes. You copy and paste them into your report, okay. And use, uh, use um, a different type of font, okay, uh, for codes. Special, use especially ano, um, equally spaced fonts, fonts, okay, or those fonts that, pro, that, uh, that produce characters that are of equal spaces. Okay, so um, one example of which is the Courier New. Okay, so you may use the, uh, for codes, you may use Courier New as uh, the font type and uh, use nine, a bit, uh, between 9 and 11 as the font size. Okay, 
So they must be inside table so that they are separated from all other texts. Okay? So So you you may ano, you may actually ano, um you may actually um copy and paste codes from the windows of MATLAB. Okay? Then um paste it, okay? Uh in the table. Okay? Then after that, simply change the font to Courier New and the font size to between 9 and 11 after that. Okay? So that will keep all the formatting done by MATLAB into your code. So this is an example of how codes, how commands in MATLAB should be reported. Okay? Again, these are text. The thing is that I can copy and paste them. Okay? So that I can actually test your code if they actually work. Okay? And um, if, for example, you are presenting a... Um, a uh, not commands, but um, say for example, a function file instead, okay, in which uh, the, the the codes are saved on a um, on an M file, okay. Then you can um, present it this way, okay. So those are uh, the guidelines for presenting codes. Number three, okay. Number third guideline: as much as possible, type in your answer, okay. So as much as possible, I want you to um, Use your word processor to type in your answer. Okay. While it, so while it is acceptable for you to write your answers on a paper, scan the paper, and then upload the scanned image into the answer sheet, it is still highly recommended that you type your reports more. Okay. Uh, typing your reports more is more convenient. Okay. Does not require you to use papers and is readable. Okay. It's uh, much more readable in most cases. Okay. So. Uh, while I do understand, okay, that some of you are still working using your mobile phones, okay. So, in that case, if you are to still write your report on a paper and um, scan the paper and upload the scanned image into into your report template or in your answer sheet, okay, be very be very careful and very vigilant on how your uploaded images turn out on a laptop screen, okay. Um, make sure that it is readable by other people. Okay. Uh, uh, remember that I'll be the one uh, evaluating your paper. Okay. So uh, it, your report must be readable by me. Okay. So if, my, if your report, but if you think that your report is readable because you are the one who have written it and then you submitted it. Okay. Um, but uh, on my side is uh, I was not able to read your report um, that much. Okay, then uh, we would have a problem with you, with the scoring of your report. Okay, so there. Now some images turned out to be blurred, too small or too large. Okay, with some images that are too, too small. Okay, um, even if there uh, I'm checking on a computer and there is this zoom in um, feature. Sometimes it does not help, okay? Because either the image was taken without or too much lighting, or the the, the resolution of the image is very low, okay? So make sure that uh, the size of your image is um is uh sufficient in order for others to read your report, okay? So please do not submit reports like this, okay? Um, this is how small the the student uploaded his uh, image into the answer sheet of a quiz. Okay, uh, and as you can see, even if I small uh, I zoom in to the paper, I still cannot read. You will not be still be you will not be able to read the contents. So, in that case, this this uh, response would automatically be invalidated, okay? Because I cannot read anything, okay? So what do, what would I, uh, no, what would I use to score this uh, response? So automatically this score or, or this uh, response would get a very low grade. I just give it a, a, a credit point of two for this particular, uh, particular, um, particular case, but this should have been a zero instead, okay? So there. So please do provide sufficiently um, sized uh, images when you are to, to provide uh, your responses as 
scan images. Okay? Number four. Number four guideline. If you ought to provide images of your report instead of typing them, use scanner apps instead of using your device's camera. Okay? So there are a lot of scanner apps uh, available on um, uh, iPhone and um, Android phones. Okay? Uh, please do download one of them. Okay? Um, I re I'd recommend um, Microsoft Lens uh, as the scanner app because it, uh, it is also included in our Office 365 um, subscription. So therefore, it should come as free. Okay? So um, as much as possible, do not use your device's camera only to scan your image. Do not just take pictures of your, uh, of your document. Scan them okay, using uh, a scanner app. Okay, here's the difference between taking uh, an image of your um, of your uh, report, okay, your written report using your device's camera, okay, and this is the same image scan, okay, using a uh, office lens, okay. So not only it is a uh, lighter, it provides lighter um image, it is also flattened. Okay, uh, the image is flattened uh, as if it, it, uh, the, 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 the way that it was uh, taken was uh, placing your phone on a very horizontal manner. Okay, so an advantage of scanner apps uh, to scan your, uh, no, your documents is that it flattens uh, your image, whatever angle you have taken them into. Okay, even if you are, uh, even if you take, have taken them on a very steep angle, uh, the scanner app would attempt to flatten the image, okay, and would produce a flatter image, okay. So you observe uh, that the scan, scan image is flatter, brighter, and the contents are much more readable than the image captured by a camera alone, okay. Now, if I actually use the whiteboard mode of Microsoft Lens, it would actually give me a much brighter um, image, okay, which is much more readable, just like this one. Okay, so in this mode, high contrast colors such as black or blue ink written on white bond paper will be di differentiated more, producing readable images. Okay, um, when adjusting the size of these images, remember that when you adjust the size, okay, because they may turn out to be too small or too large, okay. Uh, drag them off the corners. Drag them along here. Okay? Not horizontal, vertically or horizontally. Okay? Don't adjust them on the left or, or right. Okay? Or up or down. Okay? Adjust them diagonally. Okay? Using the diagonal bo uh, buttons here. Okay? Why? Because it would maintain the aspect ratio of your image. Okay, and would not distort the text written here. Okay, so as much as possible when you are um, placing uh, images into your reports, okay, always try to maintain aspect ratios so that the image would not uh, be distorted. Okay, so it would be very hard to read if your image looks like this. The letters are elongated, okay, or something like this one, okay. So it would be very hard to read something like this one, okay? So when you adjust your image, okay, adjust them along the corner, not on the sides, okay? So there. Fifth guideline, show and discuss details of your mathematical solutions, okay? So I am not privy to what goes into your mind, and so generally, I will not know if you know a certain mathematical operation or tool or process as it applies to your solutions. Okay, so I do not know if um, I do not know if uh, you know or you, you have mastered the use of the tools or process that uh, we have discussed in class or you have discussed in previous courses that we need to use in our class. Okay, so the best thing for you to help me uh, know that is to uh, put your thinking into words. Okay. Uh, Whatever you are, um, whatever you know, you have to put it into words so that I would know whether you know them or not. Okay. By default, if you did, if you do not provide discussions, 
uh, my thinking is you do not know what you're talking about. That's the thing. Okay, if you do not know what you're talking about, you do, it means that you haven't achieved the required uh, outcomes for the uh, particular lesson or particular topic that we have um, that we are assessing in your quiz or in your exam. Okay, and therefore you would score low for that. Okay, so. In the same manner, lines of equations used to present solutions to solve math problems does not amount to any shred of evidence that outcomes has been achieved. Even if you write all of the equations needed to solve a certain problem, if you do not provide narratives on what, what, what is happening in your solution, then uh, lines of equations that's, do not serve their purpose. Okay? So... Say, for example, if the outcome being measured in an assessment question is obtain the Laplace transform of a given function in T, okay, you should be able to show that you understand the complete process of obtaining Laplace transforms, okay, including, okay, including uh, which pair of Laplace transform applies to the problem, okay, and which properties of the Laplace transform are needed in order for you to obtain the Laplace transform of the given function. Okay, a bunch of equations from the problem to the answer will never be able to show this complete process. Okay, even if you present them in a complete manner, as long as you are not able to explain the narrative that goes into the thinking of why uh, you need to perform a certain process or a certain operation, okay, uh, it is uh, your solution or your response is still lack. The evidence that um, the evidence that you are achieving the outcomes being assessed in a particular question. Okay, so look at the examples here so that you would be able to understand what I am trying to say. Okay, so here uh, in this case, uh, the student just uh, if this is a question, okay, the student just provided lines of uh, applications. Okay, so. That response in our question, in our, in our quiz, and in our homeworks, and in our exams will not hold. Okay, and that kind of uh, response without any narrative will be scored very low because it does not provide any uh, thought process. It does not provide any shred of evidence whether you have been achieving the um, the the outcomes being assessed in the question or not. Okay, so. In order for you to um, to enhance this answer, for example, you need to provide narratives or you need to provide discussion for each part. So there, um, instead of just writing this uh, bunch of equations, you you narrate how to uh, how to um, you narrate how to solve them. Okay, so there. Okay, um, a good model. To follow when um, trying to write a uh, response or trying to write a yeah a response to uh, problem solving questions are the examples given in your reading materials. Okay, um, if you look at the examples uh, in the reading in your reading materials, uh, the examples here I have are are now really detailed in terms of its discussion okay so that's a good model to emulate on when writing your response okay when, whenever you write your response for a um, problem solving uh, questions you can emulate how uh, the examples in your reading materials are written okay in the same manner the use of one word or two words to narrate a certain process in your solution is insufficient. Okay, as stated in the first guideline, okay, answer or provide ans your answers in complete sentences and provide context to it. Okay, using only one word or two words to narrate your solutions without any context is just the same as not narrating anything at all. Okay, so here the student is uh, just saying ABL around A B C D E F G A. So it doesn't mean anything, okay? Uh, it does not mean anything. Then applying Laplace transform, uh, how do you apply Laplace transform and so on? 
Okay? So, one or two words used to, ano, to, to describe the process is insufficient. You need to provide complete sentences and context around your solution. Okay? So, some students provide the solution and discuss the solution after. You don't do that. <laughs> you, don't, you, you never do this. Okay? You narrate things as they happen. You provide the discussion as the process is to happen. Okay, so you don't you don't do this that you provide the solution and then you uh, provide the discussion after. Okay, so I have also given here examples of ano, of um, how your uh, response must be written. Okay, how your response must be written. So you may again use them as models. Okay, when writing your own response. Okay. Um, so, you can use this as a model. You can use the examples in the provided reading materials as a model in writing your response. Okay. So, and in, in the discussion later, in the, when we continue in the discussion of quizzes and examples, more models for, um, more models to emulate in writing your response will be provided. Okay. And here, this is important. Okay. Never ever directly leave. This is another guideline. Huh? Never ever directly leave textbook, solution manual, or any other references, statements, narrative solutions without you trying to explain this into your own words of understanding. Okay? So if you leave textbook answers, or if I feel that, the, that your answer are uh, textbook answers or answers that are provided in a textbook or in a manual, in a solution manual, or in an internet source, okay? Um, that those those uh, those kinds of answers may be scored automatically zero or very low, okay? Uh, because that actually constitutes plagiarism already, okay? So plagiarism is an act of trying to claim someone else's work in part or as a whole, as one's as one's own without proper attribution. If you actually include them, textbook answers, uh, textbook narrative into your uh, report and you without saying that this uh, this narrative were lifted from this source okay that's plagiarism already okay so remember that whatever you write into your reports you claim them as your own because you are putting your name on your report so everything that is written under your report is your own so you own them all okay so thus if your answers to the questions are exactly what a reference would say especially verbatim, word for word, okay? And you fail to attribute those answers to where the credit is due, okay? You are committing plagiarism already, okay? So any work with the plagiarized content will automatically score zero, okay? Take note that lifting your answers from your classmate or from past works, okay, unless the past works are yours, okay, is plagiarism also, with or without attribution, as long as it comes from your classmate. Okay, or any or from um, former students of the of the class. Okay, so now this is not to say that you cannot use references to compose your own answers. Okay, uh, you can. Okay, and you actually should. You are actually you are you are recommended to actually use references. Okay, now what is being prohibited here? Okay, is the act of using statements, narrative solutions from the reference without you. Okay. Uh, putting your own thoughts into it. If it's a, uh, it means that um, if you leave a textbook narrative, okay, or um, a uh, uh, set of um, steps, for example, from a book, okay, uh, it's okay, okay, as long as you say that uh, uh, those narratives or those words came from this book, okay, but you also have to, I uh, know, to. Uh, give your own take on what the narrative says. It means that you have to explain them, try to explain them into your own words or try to explain them using your own words. Okay. So that is how it should work. So you, 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 you get, you, you, you refer to, uh, to a textbook or to a reference, uh, a, you know, a, the, 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 the possible response to a question, and then you put in your own take or you put in your own words, okay, 
uh, based on what you have um, learned from the reference. Okay. So here, this shows a, you know, this shows a, a an example of student solution and answer, which was directly lifted from a solution manual. Okay. So what what I did here was all students in this class got a score of zero. Okay for the entire homework in which this item was included. So I gave the entire class a zero because this is, this is also the answer of the entire class. And this is directly lifted from the solution manual. So that's a no. That's a, that's a no, no. Okay. So it is perfectly okay to refer to your references. Okay. The reading materials I provided, prescribed textbook and books references, solution manuals, etc. And write your answers to the questions based on what you have found. Okay, what is not okay is you not you giving a personal touch and flavor on these answers. You need to provide your own uh, understanding, how how you understand them, how your uh, how did you understand these references? Okay, so you need to show that outcomes assessed in a question has been achieved by you. Okay, but failing to provide your own insight on an answer to a question does not show any achievement of outcomes whatsoever. Okay, if you use um, textbook answers. Okay, it does not provide your own thought. So there is no out uh, there is no outcome to uh, check <laughs> or there's no evidence of outcome to check. So therefore, uh, automatically your response would be record uh, would be scored very low. Okay. So we are not testing you to be skilled in finding resources. We are testing we are testing you to uh, your understanding of the subject that we are uh, dealing with in the class okay so besides this is clear and outright academic dishonesty and no reason will excuse you from the sanction that comes with it once your work contains plagiarized material okay so in this example the student lifted up statements from the reference but made the attribution and attempted to provide his or own take on these statements so this is the question okay so here the first part of the you know the answer the student provided the attribution where he or she obtained the text okay so um on these parts the student attempted to okay the student attempted to um explain using his own under his or her own understanding uh of the um narrative or discussion provided by the reference he or she used to write this answer. So this is a very good one. Okay, this is a very good answer. Okay. So I hope that um if you are to uh, no, if you are to use okay your uh, or if you are to um use references in your uh, in your answer, you attribute it properly. Okay, you cite your sources and then you provide your own take on your uh, provide your own understanding on the discussions made from your reference. Okay, so I hope that you practice these reminders as you write your reports. This will not just be a way for you to learn the subject matter while you create your reports. It also enables you to improve on soft skills, such as improving your written communication skills, using tools to create professional reports, and many more. It will also help me try to give more insightful feedback, okay, which you can also use for learning further and makes my work in assessing your submission which way, way much easier. It also increases the probability of you getting high scores because um, it would um, provide more insights. Okay, it would provide me more insight of your thinking process. So therefore, the only way that you can um, obtain high scores for quizzes, exams, and homeworks is for you to um, follow how your reports, uh, follow these guidelines, okay, on how your reports must be rated. Okay, so now that we have reviewed the guidelines on how uh, your reports must be written, now let us, um, in particular, uh, let us provide the guidelines on how you should be um, presenting your report for your quizzes and exams. Okay, so first, on the answer sheet template, okay, your response must be written below the banner indicating the question part, not inside, okay, the banner. I have many students before that uh, is prone 
to this uh, state uh, to this uh, kind of mistake that is they write their response inside the banner that indicates the question which is wrong okay so uh, this is uh, this image illustrates uh, the correct way of where to write your response so this is the banner uh, now the banner is uh, colored um, gray okay so you write your response below the banner okay so you don't write the response inside the banner okay so your report should not look like this okay so there now um you can write your response two ways as stated in before you can write your response in two ways. so number one you can type in your response on the space provided for each question and this is my recommended um manner or my, my recommended way of um, writing your report that is you type in your response okay so so say for example we are working to uh, uh, on the response to the to this uh, to, the, to this question number one so consider the circle x squared plus y squared minus 6x plus minus 8y equals zero as shown okay so so first we are asked to uh, we are asked to find the center and radius of the circle Okay. Uh, by the way, you know you, you, you do not need to uh, to copy the question into your answer sheet template. So you just need to um, write your response outright. Okay. But if it makes you comfortable to write the question on the on the here on on, on, on the answer sheet template, it's okay. But it is not required that you write the question here. Okay. So you can uh, outright proceed in writing your response. Okay. So. So let us, know, uh, let us uh, start writing your, uh, your response. Okay. So find the the first question was to find the center and radius of the circle. Okay. So so the given circle has the equation x squared plus y squared minus six x minus eight y equals zero. So let's start with that. Um. So let's erase this one. When you start your, your writing response, you, you erase the answer here words there. Okay. And then you type in your answer. So let us uh, write the following now. Um, given, so given the circle, okay, what was the equation of the circle? Um, X squared uh, no, the equation was X squared. So since I, I am writing an equation for a circle, okay, I am to use the equation editor. Okay, so you can uh, do that by inserting, I'll click insert and then equation here. Okay, and then you write this equation. So x squared can be written by, um, uh, can be written by uh, typing in uh, or using the script. Okay, and then um, you, uh, choosing this. Okay, and then typing in x and then squared here. Okay, or uh, this is the easiest way to actually just use um, the keyboard uh, in which um, the caret sign uh, actually um, triggers exponentiation or uh, superscripting. Okay, so if I type in y caret 2 and then press a space, it becomes y squared. Okay, so minus um, 6x. Um, minus 8y okay equals zero anyway the use of equations okay when you when you use your, uh, the use of um, equation editors in uh, equation editor in uh, um, Microsoft Word is something that you have to learn on your own okay so I would not be able to teach you all the, uh, that because that's out of my <laughs> that's out of our um, course uh, uh, that's out of our uh, the scope of our course now Okay, so it's actually a skill that you have to learn on your own. So given the circle, um, x squared plus y squared minus 6x minus 8y equals 0, um, we, can, okay, we can locate the, uh, its center uh, and determine its radius by rewriting the circle's equation 
in the form. Um, this form that I am writing, uh, this uh, equation, this form of equation that I am writing for a circle is uh, what uh, we call in um, in geometry as the standard form of the equation of a circle. Okay, so it actually exposes this form of the equation actually exposes the coordinates of the center of the circle. Okay, so uh, which is uh, or which indicates or with, with the coordinates. with the coordinates uh, HK, okay, uh, the, uh, with the coordinates HK, the center, of the circle. So the center of the circle uh, is located at uh, the coordinate HK, which you can see uh, here in the standard form. Okay. Uh, and R, okay, the value of R here, okay, gives the radius of the circle. Okay. So for the given circle, Uh, circle, we can group the terms okay, containing uh, x's uh, and uh, y's, okay, uh, then add constants um, so that each group uh, of terms become a perfect square uh, trinomial. So what I, what I was trying to say here is uh, that um, given this one, okay, given this equation of the circle, uh, we will have to, to be, to, for us to be able to rewrite this okay, into the standard form, we will first have to regroup or we will first have to group uh, the terms in terms of those that contain x. So we will have to group x squared and 6x together. Let's place them inside a parenthesis. Okay. And then a uh, group terms containing y. So the, that, that would be the, the term y squared and eight, negative 8y. Eight so we'll put them into parenthesis. And then what we will do is that for each group, we add constants. Okay. So that each group of terms becomes a, become a perfect square trinomial. So what we will do is we will have to make this a perfect square trinomial. This is uh, uh, this is something that you know uh, in your um, past courses as completing the square. Okay. Uh, it is say that uh, it is uh, you all you say that you are to complete the square of this uh, uh, two terms. Okay. But what we are trying to do here is to add a constant so that this becomes a perfect perfect square trinomial. So uh, to make this a perfect square trinomial, remember that um, a perfect square trinomial uh, has the following property. Okay? It has the following property. Uh, say, for example, you have um, x plus a squared. Again, a perfect square trinomial is factorable into this, ano, into this form. Okay? So x plus a squared um, becomes uh, x squared plus 2ax plus a squared as its expanded form. Okay, and this is a perfect square trinomial. Uh, this is what we consider a perfect square trinomial. So a perfect square trinomial has the following attributes. Number one, the first and the last terms are perfect squares. Okay, so the first and the last terms are perfect squares. Now the middle uh, term, okay, the middle term is twice, okay, is twice the product of the first term and the last term. So it's twice the product of the first term and the last term. Okay. So which means the concept that we will have to add here, since this becomes the third term of the trinomial, should be a perfect square. Okay. And uh, we can determine that constant, okay, 
by first actually dividing this into two. Okay? Because, uh, again, this middle term is twice the product of um, the square root of the first term and the square root of the last term. Okay? So, essentially, um, this x here originated from the square root of x squared. Okay? And uh, 6 here must come from the product of 2 times a number, which in this case, 3. Okay? So... 3 is the constant that we are looking for because 3 actually gives the third term here. If we square 3, it would give us 9, which would give us the constant needed to make this a constant, a, a perfect square trinomial. Okay? So you review your algebra regarding this one. Okay. And then here, um, this is y squared minus 8y plus 16. That completes the square of that uh, trinomial. Okay. So let's try to um, highlight this 9, okay, and this 16, okay, so that uh, we remember that we have added them into your uh, expression. And since we have added them on the left side, we also have to add those same numbers on the right side so that it, uh, the equation maintains its uh, equality, okay, so that um, still the equation is uh, true. And 19, 9 plus 16 is actually equal to 25. Okay? Now, um, the highlighted constants now, okay, represents the, uh, let's write that one. Uh, the highlighted constants, constants are the constant that uh, we have added, okay, which, uh, we, we, we also have added to the right side of the equation to maintain uh, the uh, uh, truthfulness of the equation. Um, again, we go back to this equation, okay? So we go back to that equation. So since in the, since in this equation, okay, now we, 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 you know, we now consider this to be a perfect square trinomial. So let's highlight this one, okay? And then we also consider this to be a perfect square trinomial. So we highlight this one. Then we remove this because we already de determined the sum to be 25. Okay. So now uh, we see that um, since the two highlighted um, trinomials, okay, so the highlighted the trinomials are perfect trinomials are perfect square trinomials, okay, we can, uh, they can be uh, rewritten or written as follows. So we can rewrite them as follows. No? So we will have this. Again, we can copy the, that equation. Okay, and that's the convenience of actually typing in your end because you can copy equations. Okay, so we can write this as x minus 3 uh, squared. Again, the factor of this is simply now the square root of this uh, and the middle sign and the square root of the last term squared. Okay, so this one factors to um, y minus 4 squared. Okay. So which now um, gives... Okay, so this is now uh, equation of the circle in standard form. And as we can see, as we can observe, okay, the coordinates of the center of the circle is at, okay, 
the center is at 3, 4. That's HK. Okay. So that's uh, this and this gives the H and K. Okay. And the radius is actually, this is R squared. Eh? Okay. And R squared here is 25. So therefore, R is the square root of 25. So that, that is simply 5. Okay. So um, since number the, the first um, item, okay, the first item asked for the center and the radius of the circle, we have already answered that. Okay. Because this is already the radius. Uh, I mean, this is already the uh, center of the circle and the radius of your circle. Okay. But let us, uh, no, let us provide a um, graph uh, that would describe this uh, situation. Okay. Let's provide a graph for that. So I've generated this um, illustration from Desmos. Okay. So, so, so that I can label the center and the radius. And uh, to finalize our response, let's also highlight this part of the sentence because we need to have your uh, response to be, you know, to be in full sentences. Okay. So there. So that, that now forms our uh, response or uh, our answer to the question. Okay. So since the, uh, the question asks for the center and the radius of the circle, okay, so we have provided the center and the radius of the circle. And although the question does not require us to present a, an illustration, we still have provided it because, uh, again, this would enhance uh, your chance of getting a high score because this indicates that you, are, that you have a, um, a profound understanding okay, of what is being asked here. Okay, so there. Now let us continue on writing the response, but uh, I will not um, demonstrate it here in the in the recorded uh, in, in this recording. Okay, so I'll just um, show it uh, show it to you uh, 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 after it is done. Okay. So here um, at this point, I uh, I am done writing the uh, response for uh, number uh, for question one. Okay, so. This is my response for question two. Again, uh, I provided an illustration, okay, without uh, even the even the question does not require me to do so, because again, this is still uh, is um, or this is, is pro this, this provides uh, the evaluator an insight on how you understand because you are able to illustrate it. Eh? You are able to put it into an illustration, okay, and then. Um, so you write your equations and so on. You explain them. And then finally, you highlight your final answer. Okay. So this is the answer. Uh, this is the response for your question, question one, part C. Okay. And finally, this is the response for question one, part B. Okay. So that's the, uh, that uh, this is now your um, accomplished answer sheet for question one, part A. I mean for question one, okay? So this is now your uh, accomplished um, answer sheet. Now you save it and make sure that uh, its file name is still QZ101, the question code for which uh, this question should correspond to, okay? Now, now let's proceed to question code QZ102 or question two, okay? Which has two parts, okay? Part A and part B. Okay, now, um, this time, um, instead of actually writing, oh, by the way, so that is the first manner of um, writing your report now, by typing in your response. Okay, so when writing your response in this manner, use equation editors to write in equations, resize images reasonably, okay, highlight your final answers, and use the templates formatting settings. Okay, of font type, font size, alignment, spacing, and margin. As much as possible, do not change any of the formatting settings. Uh, uh, the only time that you are allowed to is, for example, when you are to emphasize something by uh, writing a part of your text into bold typeface or into italics typeface and so on, or writing codes from uh, your computer, uh, from your um, computational software. Okay. So there. Now, 
Um, the second way by which you can write and present your responses is by writing them on a piece of paper. Okay? And then using a scanner, using a scanner app, okay, installed on your mobile phone, uh, scan the handwritten report as an image, insert the image into the answer sheet template, uh, and let's try to see the illustration here. Okay, in which um, this is actually a uh, question two. Okay, so let's try to answer question two using that manner. So this is the answer sheet for your question two. Okay, and so I have written my um, response to a piece of paper, and then I scanned it. I, I scanned them using um, I scanned the handwritten pages uh, using Microsoft Lens, and then I have saved it into my computer. So these are the image files for those. So here's the first page of my um, response, okay? Uh, for question one, uh, question two, part A, okay? This is the second page of that, okay? And this is the uh, the lone page for uh, question two, part B, okay? Now, um, again, uh, you are encouraged to use um, uh, scanner app so that uh, you may produce um, better images. Okay, but it actually starts you with you writing leg legibly. Okay, you first have to write legibly on the paper, and as much as possible, write big. Okay, because you have to uh, you have to scan the the document after it. So writing small would actually not help uh, in producing a quality images for your response. Okay. Now, uh, we can actually do some, uh, uh, some adjustments to our image. Like, for example, we can actually crop out those parts that are not need really needed, like the, the spaces on the sides. We can actually crop them out. Okay? So it's actually recommended that you crop those um, white spaces out of your images so that uh, you will be able to have a more um, slick uh, image. Okay, so let's save that one. Let's have the second page again. Let's crop the white spaces on the sides. Just make sure that you are not cropping important parts of your paper when you do this. So we now have our crop images. Okay, now we're ready to ins insert them into our report. Okay. So again, um, we erase this one. So this is the answer sheet for the you know, for the uh, question two. Okay. So again, we uh, fill this form, uh, this uh, field up. Okay. So let's have De La Cruz uh, Juan Palermo. Uh, we have the force code as EC XXXX30. And ECE191 is our section. Okay. So those are the things that we need to fill up. And then um, we need now to put in our answer. Okay, our scanned answer here. Okay. So um you do that by first putting your cursor on the center, then use insert pictures. Uh you insert the picture from so from this location, okay, so let's choose this one because this is the first page of our um, answer for part A. So this is the resulting um, image when inserted. Okay, so first thing, you have to make sure that uh, the page actually covers the entire width of your page. Okay, so you may, um, again, you may crop them out, okay, using this if you are to, ano, to crop the uh, white spaces if there are still any, okay? And um, you may adjust the size, okay? Uh, the size of your image. You may adjust the size of your image by selecting the image, going to the picture format, and then selecting or adjusting this width or this height. Um, I, it is recommended that you adjust the size the, the size of your images here on this part because um, it maintains the aspect ratio of your again as I uh, mentioned earlier you, you need to maintain the aspect ratio of your images so that uh, the text of your handwritten report will not become distorted. 
Okay? So, let's set the uh, width to 7.2 inches. Okay? So, that's 7.2 inches. Okay? So, that uh, it would ensure that it covers the entire width of the page. Okay? So, there. Now, um, let's start the next uh, one. Okay? Let's start the next uh, answer. I, by the way, I have a second page to insert. Pa, so, again, I'll center the... Uh, cursor, insert, picture. So this is the page two of that response. Okay, so there. So we don't need to crop anything out here because uh, there's no more white space to be cropped out. Let's just set the width to 7.2 inches. Like so, there. So that now constitutes your res response for question two, part eight. Okay, so I need, or we need your, ano, your response. Well, when you are writing your report this way, I need your uh, scanned image to be of quality so that I can read, as evaluator, I can read your, ano, your response uh, easily. Okay, so there. And then let's, um, let's start the next, uh, our response for question uh, part B on the next page. So let's erase this one. Okay. Put the cursor on the center, click insert, picture, and then insert the image for uh, QZ102B. There. Okay, so again, let's adjust the, um, the image width to 7.2. Okay, so there. So that now uh, constitutes your response for uh, question 2. Okay, and uh, at this point, we're done with the report for question two. So let's save this one. Again, as QZ102. So when you intend to submit in this manner by, sub by scanning uh, your written, uh, uh, your handwritten uh, response, okay, please observe the following. Okay, uh, you have to write clearly and legibly. Okay. So it is highly possible that the evaluation of your paper will be forfeited if your report is unreadable. Once I get to see that your report is unreadable, uh, you may miss the chance of uh, of getting any any credit score for the particular question. Uh, use high contrast paper and ink when writing reports. Okay. Uh, the preferred one was is to use a blank ink. Okay. Written on a white paper. Okay, that's the preferred, ano, the preferred uh, combination. But um, if the only material that you have in there with you are, uh, for example, yellow pad paper okay, and uh, black or blue ink, then that might also do. Okay? Uh, that will also do. Just make sure that uh, your, your handwriting is readable. Okay? Use a scanner app such as Microsoft Lens to scan your doc document. Mobile phone cameras do not have the features of a document scanner app such as flattening your image, removing shadows, etc. Okay? Now, when you have placed your scanned image in the answer sheet template, crop the unnecessary spaces out of the image. You can do that um, using an image editor, okay? Or you can do that inside the uh, Microsoft Word after you um, uploaded the image into the answer sheet. So to do that, uh, select your image, go to the picture format tab, Choose crop under the size group, okay, so that you can crop the white uh, spaces around your uh, image, okay. Then you can set the width of your image to 7.2 inches, which is you can uh, you can set it here, okay. Your images should cover the entire width of the page of your answer sheet, okay. It's the general rule, okay. So something like this is unacceptable. That is, you just uploaded with this size, okay, and. Uh, this will not be enough. This will not be uh, uh, acceptable to me. Okay. Now, never allow your image to be too long or too large that it would skip an entire page. Okay. Now, let us just say that after you, uh, no, after you have inserted your image in your, in your, into your answer sheet, this is what happens. Okay. This is what uh, happens into your uh, template. Okay. Answer sheet template. Okay. Um, do not submit your uh, uh, answer sheet in this way. Okay, uh, this is really annoying to me. Okay, so do not um, allow 
very large space, uh, empty space that uh, that is present into your ano, into your um, uh, answer sheet. For one thing, I can inter ano, I can uh, interpret this to be of no answer, okay? Because sometimes uh, I really do not scroll down uh, your answer sheet, okay? Because again, I am expecting that you put your answer under the banner, okay? So what what will you do if you ano, if you have a situation just like this, okay? That um your image is actually too long, so that um it actually skips one of the uh the page. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. Uh, you make a copy of this, okay, of this image below, below it, okay. So you make you make a copy of that. So select Control C for copy, then put the cursor on the corner, then um press Enter, then paste Control D, okay. So that's how you make a copy of that um uh page. Now let us crop this so that it fits on the first page. Okay. So let us uh go to picture uh, let us select the, the image, go to picture format, crop. Okay, crop it from below, from here. Okay, so crop it, say for example, until here, and see if uh the page now adjusts to the second one. Okay, so now um with this level with this know, with this um kind of um cropping, okay, or with this uh length of cropping, your image is now on the first page. Okay. Now what we need to do is to uh crop the lower part of that, and then the reason why you make a copy is that you have to crop the upper part of that same image so that uh it becomes continuous. So since we have cropped our uh, uh crop uh the first page from uh, uh, up to this point. We have to crop this uh, up from above, okay, up to this point. There, up to that point. Okay, so now that ensures now your uh, your page to be uh, fully reported, okay, fully presented, but at the same time, it does not leave. Um, a large space after the banner uh, of uh, question two part A. Okay. Now let's do this for here because uh, again this is still a uh, process. Uh, it for have to to have a large space here. Again, we we need this to be continuous. So after this page, we need to have your page. Uh, we need to read your page here. So again, we make a copy of this. So Control C for copy. Then we put our cursor here. Okay, center it, paste. Okay, and then let's crop this one. Okay, again, select, go to picture format, crop. Crop it from below. So let's have it until at this point. And see that we can actually uh, add more of the image. Okay. I think we can stop here. Okay, and then uh, the copy we have to crop the parts that are already here in the in the first page. Okay, so we have to crop this one until this point. There. So. There is our no, there's our um response now. So you see that uh you can now continue while I read the document. Okay. And uh there there are no too much large spaces that are present. So we continue on by adjusting this up. Okay, and then again, let's uh make a copy of this one. Okay, place it below the document. Okay, and then crop this, okay, from below, so that um, the first part would actually go to the first page, say, for example, until this point. Okay, that enough. Up to this. There. Okay, I think this is enough. Okay, so let's crop this one. And then on, this, on the copy, okay, we have to remove this uh, part, this part. In, in, from the copy. 
Okay, so that uh, we can continually, uh, we can have, we can produce continuous uh, report for your uh, question or for your response. Okay, so let's grab this one. So there. So now, uh, we do not have now the large spaces okay, that are present earlier because our image is too long. Okay, so you need to remove those large spaces. Okay, I don't want those large spaces appearing on your uh, answer sheets. Okay. So other things that you have to remember when um, submitting your report in uh, uh, using handwritten um, documents. Okay, always the size images under the size group of the pictures format tab. Okay. Uh, this will ensure that your image will maintain its aspect ratio. So every time you adjust images, you need to maintain the aspect ratio of your images. Okay. I don't want seeing your images to be um, distorted. I don't want uh, seeing too much, too, too large of a handwriting or too little a handwriting. Okay. Or letters that uh, handwriting that are too long or too, too stout or, you know, uh, disproportionate um, letters uh, in, in your handwriting. So I don't want seeing that. Okay. So whenever you are adjusting, okay, your, uh, the size of your images, uh, always use this, um, this uh, part of the uh, application. Okay. Just make sure that you have to check this lock aspect ratio. Okay. Or as I mentioned earlier, you can actually adjust them by dragging the corners, okay, and not the uh, the sides, okay. So there. Never upload images that are too dark, blurred, with illegible handwriting, full of shadows, too large or too small, etc. Do not submit something like this. I was not able to read anything out of this, so. Um, Though um I was I think I was able to decipher some that's why I I, I have given this a score of five uh there <laughs> so but um something like this would actually not work uh at this point okay so if you submit a a, a report or a response uh that is uh something like this uh, chances are I will not check this and just give it a, just give it a score of zero so. In general, always remember that your reports are to be evaluated. So therefore, they must be readable in order for the evaluator to give proper credit points to your report. Okay. Thus, it is your responsibility to ensure that your report is readable by the one who will evaluate it. It is not enough that you, are the, that you can read your report. It should be that the reader or other persons could, act, could actually read your report properly. Okay. So... If you do not have an answer to a particular question part, leave it blank or write no answer okay, on the space provided. If you do not ha have any responses to an entire question item, for example, for the entire question one, okay, uh, do not upload anything on the quiz form. Okay? So submissions on the, uh, submission on the quiz form is not actually required. You are, not re uh, you are really not required to submit anything on each of the uh, items of the quiz form okay so that if you don't have a response for a particular question item you don't really need to provide one so next report file format and file name okay you have to save your report okay so this now these are now our reports okay and we have to save them using uh the docx format so we have to um save the report using the docx format okay so uh, as you can see here, uh, our the, the file type of our um, of our answer sheets, accomplished answer sheets are um, Microsoft Word document, which is in docx. Okay, so you have to ensure that number one, the file name of the answer sheet corresponds to the uh, question code for which it answers to. Okay, so if this uh, template is for question uh, QZ101, then uh, its uh, answer sheet should be named as QZ101. Now, if you download them properly, if you have downloaded them properly at the start, you need not to worry about this because uh, 
the answer sheet when downloaded properly is named already as the question code. Okay. But again, uh, please do check whenever you are making uh, your reports and, when, and before you actually upload. Okay. Uh, because sometimes uh, you may uh, have, uh, you may mix up things or mix, th mix things up and you may have uh, inadvertently uh, change the file names of your uh, answer sheet. So therefore, you have, please do check those things before you upload. So save your report as a docx file with the file name corresponding to the question code it is intended for. So if it answers QZ101, the questions under QZ101, then it should be named as QZ101.docx. Now, now, since you are done with your reports, okay, you are now ready to upload them. Okay? If you are ready to upload and submit your reports, you go to the quiz form via the, via the assignments tab of Teams. So you will have to go back here at this, you know, at this um, uh, quiz form. Okay? And uh, because this is where we will upload our answer at this part. Okay? So uh, upload your files into its proper location using the question code as the matching criterion. So here, uh, in this item, we need to upload the answer sheet for question QZ101. So select this upload file. Uh, I mean, click the button of upload file and then um, click the proper file to be uploaded there, which is QZ101. Okay. And then wait for it to upload. Okay. So it's now uploaded. Okay. So we proceed with QZ102. Okay. And then wait for it to upload. Now, after everything has, has been uploaded, okay, you need na, you can now submit. Okay, you can now click the submit. Okay. Please do not click the submit button if you are not uh if everything is not yet uploaded. Okay. You can you, you are to uh, no, you are to um click this submit bot button only once. And once you have clicked this submit button, you have already submitted. So if there is an error in your ano, in your submission, because say for example, uh, you you have failed to upload one of the files, uh, and then you have you, you have already clicked the submit button. Then we cannot do anything about that anymore because you already have submitted. Okay, so let's click submit. Then wait for this um part where it indicates that your response has been submitted. So now you have you have already submitted your uh, report for quiz number one. So again, as a reminder, if you do not have any report, to, if you do not have any report to submit on an item, leave it as it is. Do not upload. There is no need for you to upload anything on an item that you not that you do not have any accomplished report. Okay. Now, now some other reminders. Okay, uh, for the quizzes, please take note of the following important reminders when taking your quizzes or exams. Uh, one, write and submit a report that is presentable and professionally made. So I am expecting that you uh, that your reports are now to be uh, professionally looking, okay, and uh, decent and um, presentable, okay. So you have access to Office 365 apps that will help you create decent and professional reports. Learn how to use and maximize these apps. You are also, you are also reminded to review the guidelines set for writing your reports written in the on writing your reports space under the course information section of your class notebook to help you make presentable and professional reports. So we have already reviewed this one earlier. Okay. Now this is important. It's a second reminder. Never put in any plagiarized content on your report. Okay. This will automatically make your score for the quiz or exam to be zero. And no, that, that would be no questions asked. Okay. Um, you will not be <laughs> asked to defend why there is a plagiarized content on your report because that is undefensible, uh, indefensible. Okay. Now, um, plagiarized content includes, but not limited to, okay, screenshot of books, solution manuals, work of others, including your classmates, former students of the class, etc. That is intended to be most of your response to the question or majority of the response to your question. Okay. If, uh, the, if, if the screenshot is actually used as the response itself or most of the response itself, it's considered to be a plagiarized content. Okay. Statements, images, codes, or other materials that were lifted off 
from sources that you did not cite. Okay? And you may use these materials as part of your, but not as your actual response, provided that you cite them where you have taken them. As I have mentioned earlier regarding um, uh, lifting up statements from references, uh, you can use them, you can use these statements from your references, okay? As long as you give your own take into them. Okay, but if you fail to do that, uh, that, that um, response would be considered as plagiarized. So, next, you may use computational apps to aid in your, you, to aid you in writing your response. Okay, now you need to present the entire process of the use of the app in your report. Okay, you need to present the entire process. Again, uh, Yun, good afternoon. Yeah, nilig na ako. Okay, so, um, wait lang. <laughs> um, um, wait lang, no? I'll stop the, ano, the playing of the announcement here, no? So, sabi ko nga sa inyo, medyo mahaba tong, itong, ano, itong announcement nito, okay? So I'll encourage you to finish off the watching the uh, the announcement so that you get to be oriented on the entire process. Okay. So may mga parts pa yan that uh yung, kung paano kayo magre-report ng um, parts where you are to use computer aided um, solutions. Okay? And um, it also the other parts of the ano of the um, video also this uh, will discuss yung um yung rubric that will be used to evaluate or to score your responses. Okay? So, in any case, sirit lang, no? Uh, available naman sa, ano, sa inyong, ano, uh, um, class notebook yung written version nung diniskas ko. Okay? Yung written version nun is available on your class notebook under the page quizzes and exams. So, included sa ano, included dito sa page na to, lalo na dun sa pinakadulo if you are to check this, is yung ano, yung uh, copy nung answer sheets uh, that ano, that I demonstrated here. Yung mga inaccomplish na, uh, yung dinemonstrate ko ang mga answers that were accomplished in this one. So, this answers yung questions ng uh, quiz one. So, here, um, I am showing kung paano dapat sana isulat yung reports ninyo. Okay? So, yun, nandito yan sa bandang dulo nung ano. This, this is found on the, uh, yun, the last part of the, ano, of the page. Okay? So, ayun. So, bali, nandito na kasi yung, uh, yung video. Nandito na yung discussion niya sa part na to. Yan. Nandiyan na yung, part, yung discussion sa part na yan. Okay? So, ito pa yung mga i-discuss sana. So, I encourage you to, ano, to finish off um, watching the video. Especially sa rubric din lalo. Para makita nyo rin ko na yung mga hanapin ko with your responses. So, dito sa rubric, in-underline ko na yung mga keywords that you need to remember. Okay? Para ano, para yun na yung tatargetin nyo na makita dun sa sagot ninyo dapat. So, ito yun. Okay? Then, I also place here um, yung possible things that would happen if uh, you commit non-compliance to the guidelines. Okay? So, it might uh, lead you to some uh, minor deductions or... Um, kung major yung, ano, yung non-compliance ninyo, it might actually invalidate your entire uh, submission. Okay, so yun yung worst case scenario. Okay, so yun na nga. Pagtapos nun, yun na yung mga example answer sheets natin. Example accomplished answer sheets. Okay, so I hope that, ano, that this would help you plan for tomorrow's quiz. Okay, so may questions ba? Sa mga guidelines natin or anything? May questions tayo? Ah, 
Okay, so I don't know kung hindi kayo ah, hindi nyo ako natitinig or ah, hindi, lang talaga, hindi nyo lang talaga feel mag-react. Anyway, so anyway, pag may questions pa kayo, uh, uh, just uh, send me a message para mapag-usapan natin. Okay, so that should end our class for today. Okay, so again,